Welcome back to Puerto Rico Life. My name is Jeff Holst, and I am starting a new series on the channel where I interview people I know from around Puerto Rico. Some of these people are going to be people that have lived in Puerto Rico their whole life. Some of them are going to be people that recently moved to Puerto Rico. And we're going to talk about their experience and what they like, and, and maybe even what they don't like, about the island of Puerto Rico. And today, I'm super excited to have one of my good friends on the channel. His name is Todd Folk. And Todd has been in Puerto Rico for, I think, around four years now. And I'm just going to go ahead and bring him on right now. So Todd, welcome to Puerto Rico Life. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me, Jeff. How are you doing today? Always, always excellent. You know, no bad days, all that stuff. <laughs> so awesome. Todd, how long have you been in Puerto Rico? Uh, I've been here for creeping up on four years now. Okay. So it's, uh, May of 2024 right now. So you moved in 2020 to Puerto Rico. Yeah. Yeah. We moved in 2020 officially, uh, official technical move in, move in was November 1st. I believe it was, uh, that's when Chris and I both came down here. Although I spent a lot of time coming back and forth prior to that for, uh, setting up everything. Uh, got to see the cheapest flights I'll ever see in my entire life, <laughs> hands down, no questions asked. I, I do miss that. You know, I, I first started um, my decision to come to Puerto Rico around that same time, right? Like it was around uh, March of 2021, so a few months after you. But but again, I was like, you know, flying back and forth for all of 2021, and it would be a few hundred dollars from to fly like, delta not like you know a legion or something and to fly from chattanooga which is not the cheapest place to fly so that is kind yeah. of um i do miss that but yeah so the covid times pluses and negatives obviously but that's a weird time to decide to move to puerto rico um it, it was a yeah. time i mean island-wide curfews and all that stuff so how did you adapt to that part of it yes yeah, so uh i moved here from new york city uh so all these island-wide curfews and everything were nothing to the restrictions that were set in new york city fair enough um, i moved from chattanooga so, tennessee so it's a different experience i think we were yeah. shut down for like four minutes um i mean really like i remember like you know so covid i think the shutdown started like early march right and um yeah. my birthday was april 27th i mean like it is every year and we had a birthday party at my house, April 27th of 2020, right? Now, we did it outside by the pool. Everyone stayed, you know, five, six feet apart. But, like, we people were out and about already then. And by May, they were opening outside restaurants. And by June, like, you know, stuff was opened back up here. Um, but it wasn't like that in yeah. Puerto Rico at all. Um, it wasn't like that in New York either. It, no. Like when we shut down, we shut down for months. No one allowed outside, no one anything. You know, everything was extremely restricted. I remember you were talking about like, oh, and by May, blah, blah. In May, I'll never forget my flight from Newark to San Juan and back, round trip, taxes included, $54.80. <laughs> so crazy. Like that's how much no one was touching going outside. Like it was nothing. It was an empty airport. I think I was one of three people on that flight. Yeah. Well, the airports were very empty at that point. I mean, I, I remember flying um, in June of 2020, right? That was the first flight I did um, post the COVID shutdown. I flew in, in February, 2020 and it was a completely different deal. Right. Yeah. But like, but like when I flew in June of 2020, um, I flew out to, um, uh, Montana to go to Yellowstone, which is amazing. There was nobody at Yellowstone. I've been open for two days, right? I, I got there yeah. June 2nd of 2020. Um, but it was, a, I mean, it was, a, it was a crazy experience. You're walking around the airport and like, you know, you see like two people sitting waiting for a flight at the gate. Like, I mean, it was just yeah. really strange. Really so crazy. what's really fun is COVID had nothing to do with our decision to move here. Literally <laughs> absolutely nothing. We made our decision before COVID was even in existence because we did, uh, Chris and I did a charter in the BBI, did a layover here for 10 hours, loved so much old San Juan and the surrounding area that a month later, I was like, hey, Krista, do you want to move to Puerto Rico for a year and see if we like it? And she was like, uh, I've been there for 10 hours. And I'm <laughs> like, and? She goes, I'm like, the worst case scenario, we just come back to New York. She goes, fuck it. Why not? Let's go. And so we made that decision. And then like a month and a half later, COVID hit, everything's shutting down. And we're like, 
well, we're still definitely making this decision. Uh, so we just decided to press yeah. on and did it. And, you know, we our goal was one year and we're almost at four now. Yeah. And you live in Viejo San Juan, so you still love it there. Yeah. Old San Juan. Oh, absolutely. Is, um, what, what do you like about living in Puerto Rico? And specifically, why did you choose Viejo San Juan over like, say, Condado or Rinco? Yeah. Yeah. Great, great, great questions. Um, we'll, we'll start with why uh, Old San Juan. Well, uh, again, we were moving here from New York City. So uh, besides all the beauty and the historic aspects and everything like this, the fact that it's a little bit busy and has that hustle and bustle to it is kind of reminiscent of like the West Village. You know, like you got beautiful cobblestone streets, you got old buildings and you got a lot of people moving around. So I feel like we feel like we're kind of still in the city and it's really, uh, I hate saying this word, but it's kind of bubblish in the sense that almost anything you need is here. You need a grocery store right down the street. You want 30 restaurants right down the street. I love Sorokin cigars. This is where all the cigar lounges are really at. You know, it's really interesting actually about um, Viejo San Juan is that like, if you come there as a tourist, you think it's all restaurants, bars, and like souvenir shops. But, you know, having spent a fair amount of time there, I realized that like to get to the restaurants, bars, and souvenir shops, I walk by a Marshall's and I yeah. walk by a Burger King. These are not for tourists. They're just there. Like that's, yeah. you know, grocery shopping, department stores, um, banks, yeah. all that stuff is there. And it's just all blends in because of the historical nature of the, the yeah. area. 100%. Just makes it easy to move around. Uh, I love the fact that I can walk everywhere very, very, very easily. And again, 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 there's a bunch of cigar shops here, which is a big deal for me. This is the highest concentration of cigar lounges in the whole island. So it's a giant win for me. Um, but just what do I love about Puerto Rico in general? Uh, realistically, um, a lot of stuff. So big one for me is I love the weather. Um, hot weather's never bothered me. It's always been my favorite. Um, in New York, I used to suffer from a little bit of seasonal depression when it got cold. You know, it's like, oh man, I want I like I like to be outside. Don't get that here ever. Um, but like another thing that really sold us on staying here was access outside. What I mean by that is. When Chris and I wanted to dip out of the city in New York, we would drive for four to six hours to go to upstate New York. And we would, you, you make a weekend or, you know, a week out of it mm. here, 30 minutes. I'm out in the middle of nowhere in a beautiful rainforest, jumping in crystal clear, cool water, loving life. And then I go, you know what? I'm done for the day. I'm going to go home by 6 p.m. Well, and, and I might stop at the cigar do bar else. on the way home, right? Like, oh, yeah. I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna stop by amazing food. I'm gonna stop by a farm that makes cigars, and then it's just like everything is so close but so diversified, mm. you know? Or like you can literally, literally be like, I'm gonna go up into the mountains, enjoy a hike, and then I'm gonna end my day at a beautiful beach. Like, how many yeah. places in the world can you do that within? you know, 30 minutes of each other. Yeah. And, and you, know, there, you know, that is one thing I learned from you. Like, so, you know, we met like, I guess going on three years now, uh, probably yeah. two, two and three quarter years ago, something like that. And we met at a cigar bar, right. I mean, a cigar lounge in, in, in Viejo San Juan. And um, you know, since then, I think we've become a little bit um, more connected than just the average like person who you meet at a cigar bar, because yeah. I ended up investing with you um, and Krista in your charter sailboat company, which we'll get to that in a minute, what you're doing there. Um, and then we started a cigar line together. So we're doing that. Um, so, you know, we've been, we've, you know, obviously I, I know you fairly well over the last few years, but, um, but the thing that I think that stands out to me the most is when I first got to Puerto Rico and I was going through my own like life changes and stuff, you and Krista said, Hey, let's go to the rainforest and like, let's go hang out in, in this beautiful tropical place. And you picked me up and took me to the rainforest. I mean, I wouldn't even have known about like Angelito trailhead, which, you know, I did a video on that put it up there before, um, you know, about that. Um, actually I've done a couple of videos about that on this channel, but I mean, so many of the things that I've discovered in Puerto Rico has been because of you, you were saying to me like, uh, you know, well, you know, if you, you like beaches, you should check out, you know, this beach and you, you know, and I, I mean, I could, I could name a gazillion things that you guys told me about. And that's one of the things I love about, 
about the two of you is you're always trying new things, doing new things. And you're saying, Hey, check out this restaurant, check out this bar, check out this beach, check out this spot in the rainforest. It's not like the rainforest itself. It's like this spot. And also, yeah. Hey, you need to meet this guy. He's got this great thing going on and that guy. And I love that about you guys. And I love that about Puerto Rico actually, because that's yeah. it's a very I, Puerto I, Rican I, thing. Yeah. And one, one thing I could say is as much, and, you know, thank you very much for saying that, but I feel like, you know, I haven't even scratched the surface. I know. Like Same. I, I, I've probably been to like 20 waterfalls and then I had a dude show me an image of like all these waterfalls mapped out and there's like hundreds. And I'm like, Whoa, I, this is amazing. Right. And, and, and then there's the beaches, the trails everywhere. There's and always plus, you, something you, you amazing guys, to do. You and Krista, you, you probably go to Calabria like every weekend, right? Yeah, I wish. <laughs> I <laughs> like, wish. Like I and, wish. I wish. Vieques, I wish. Right. Like I mean, that's the thing. There's just so much, right, in Puerto yeah. Rico. So absolutely. Um, I don't want to take too much of your time because I know you're a busy guy running the businesses. So tell us quickly about you and Chris's charter business, uh, and we'll talk about the cigar business. Then we'll talk about what you're doing next in Puerto Rico, and then we'll wrap up. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, I, I told you before, the original goal was to be here for a year. Uh, and then we'll figure it out. Well, we figured it out. We really loved it and we wanted to stay. So we had to figure out how do we want to make money? So Krista was actually the highest rated charter captain in New York City. So we decided to bring that down here. Uh, so we started up our own charter company, focusing on the niche of a more higher end market, a more service oriented experience. Uh, and that's Blue to Balloon Charters uh, LLC out of uh, Old San Juan. And now also out of Fajardo, because we have a boat in Fajardo as well. And I'll put the um, Blue to Balloon link in the show notes for people so they can find you. But what do you, so you do um, luxury charter sailing in San Correct. Juan Bay and also out of Fajardo. Correct. Yeah, that's the the basic gist out of it. We focus primarily on sailing catamarans because there's a lot of power yachts around. Uh, so we found a real big need for uh, luxury sailing catamarans is really where it boiled down to. Yeah. And that experience is amazing. I've actually done a little bit of content on this channel on the boat as well. Um, and, you know, one of the things that you guys did for me, like, I guess almost two years ago now, can you believe that it's been that long? We sailed yeah. from San Juan in your boat all the way down to St. Martin. And you guys continued on even further than that. But we did like a five day cross ocean sail together. Um, and that was a great experience. I don't know if this is technically cross ocean, but we'll say cross Caribbean. Cross cross sea out cross into sea. the water. Like, but but the, <laughs> the point is, like, uh, of course, and that's not something you do just to be clear for people that might be interested in something like that. That's not something that you do for tourists. That was really just a repositioning cruise for your boat. But but yeah. I mean that um that does I think it does sort of show the character of Puerto Rico, though. You're a person that I didn't know a year before that, and you're inviting me, someone, a relative stranger, to go on a, a you know, in, in a sm relatively small boat with just a few people on a multi-day trip across the uh, the water. We'll say since you don't like ocean, <laughs> <laughs> but but I mean that's that's very Puerto Rican, right? Like that's that's the experience that I have with almost everyone I meet there. Like people bond and share experiences with each other. And that's one of the things I love the most about it. Yeah. So what I, what I think is to, to really go into that, I think it's two, two specific things. Um, one, there's a lot of people moving here. And when a lot of people move into place, they want to make friends, they want to connect, they want to bond with people really fast. And then the second one is the local people are just unbelievably friendly and amazing Super nice. Yeah. so that cultural aspect bleeds over to that host mentality really comes out they're truly truly wonderful friendly amazing people i can't say that enough they've been extremely welcoming we've learned a lot of the spots that i've learned that i love i've learned all from locals and they're like you have to check this out if you're going to appreciate it we want you to appreciate it yeah no and that that's exactly the experience i've had as well and so so many uh people that grew up in Puerto Rico that have been in Puerto Rico their whole life that have taken me in and said, Hey, you know what? If you like that, you gotta, you gotta check this out, but it's not even just like this spot. It's like, like my mom makes the best, whatever, like, let yeah. me have you, you over for dinner. This. You've got to try yeah, 100%, you know, all that 100%. kind of stuff all the time. 
And, uh, you know, and these are the best restaurants and these are the best views and these are the best waterfalls, like you said. So that's fantastic. All right. So let's briefly talk about the cigar line, because I think that's a really interesting um, sort of thing that you and I are doing together. Yeah, absolutely. So the the whole point with the cigar thing was I always wanted my own private cigar line and I was certain I was going to have to move to like Nicaragua for a span of my life to build this out. Um, and I stumbled across a farm in Rio Grande, I think in Neo Ibarro. And I'll oh, put made... their information in the show notes. Yeah, as yeah, well, absolutely. Because you guys need to check but this place out. Beautiful farm, great people, and they make excellent cigars. So I had the conversation with them, be like, hey, would you do a private line for me? And they're like, yeah. So he sat down and I, I said, all right, well, I don't want to do this by myself because it's kind of boring. Uh, to just do something fun like this by yourself. So I reached out to a handful of people that I smoke cigars with often, like yourself. And I'm like, yo, it's this amount of money. Do you want in? It's a private line of cigars for us. Uh, we're going to try to sell it and make some money. And the goal is sell enough that we could smoke for free. And, yeah. that and, ended up happening. and I think we're going to get there too, because they've turned yeah. out amazing and um, currently not available very many places, but they are available um, at Scryer in, in Viejo San Juan, right? Like you yeah. can buy the, yep, yep. you can buy the El Bastion Panatella there at Scryer, yep. a rum bar, which those, those are, that's another example of people that I met in Puerto Rico that are just amazing. I probably need to get them on the show sometime too, and talk to them about their experience being in Puerto Rico and starting a rum business here. Um, but, Absolutely. But yeah. I mean, uh, again, like an, an amazing, um, example of people that you meet in Puerto Rico. So, um, all right. So what, what's next for Todd and Krista? Like, what are you guys going to, Krista's Todd's girlfriend for people who don't know, um, and the captain of the sailboat. Um, but what are you guys going to work on next? What, what are you thinking? Staying in Puerto Rico? Let's start there. Oh yeah. Yeah. hundred percent staying here. Um, uh, I think I mentioned this before when chatting you, I, I think the opportunities here are endless. I really, really think they're endless. Um, so the next one for me is uh, we are building a shipyard in Ponce. We're currently raising the funds for that now uh, to manufacture uh, luxury catamaran yachts. Um, and yeah. that's purely because and when of you the, say the we you mean need. you and i are doing that together right? yes yes so yes, yes, yes clear yes, like full you're, you're partnering, with me on Todd this one, and partnering on that um and and we're going to build yachts like the ones that that you want to use for the charter company um absolutely. a little bit bigger and in compliance with the jones act which is limiting yep. um your current business to uh, smaller yep. capacity boats absolutely yeah so the two major things we're looking at with that is they, they're U.S. built, so they comply with the Jones Act, and they'll be splashing with what is called their COI, their Certificate of Inspection from the Coast Guard, which really opens up a humongous market that is very, very difficult to tackle right now. One that we've been seeing in our charter business is very hard, and we get a lot of inquiries for it, and almost no one in Puerto Rico can effectively handle it. Uh, to the scope that's interested. So it opens up like, you want to have a wedding reception on a boat? We got you. You want to have a giant, a big bachelorette party? You want to have a company retreat? You want to have a mastermind? All of these become actual options now, uh, which never really happened before. Mm. And that opens it up to expansion within the US, which is we've seen demand in those capacities as well. Yeah, and and we're gonna do a um we're gonna do a full video about that opportunity, what that's like. So if you're really interested in that, um, just it's gonna be up above Todd's head, I think, will be a link, and I'll put that up there right now so that you can actually go to that video and see more information about that because there is actually an opportunity for people to invest alongside of us in that if they want to. And so if you're interested in doing that, check out the link and you get like a little bit more information and some ability to contact us if you want to reach out and talk about the possibility of being involved with us and partnering with us in building ships, boats, giant sailing yachts, catamarans, for the charter market. And I'm excited about it. It's going to be amazing. And also it's going to benefit Puerto Rico. That's one of the things I love the most yeah. about the project is we're working really closely with the Puerto Rican government, um, with the, with the Port Authority in Ponce to uh, be able to produce an opportunity to, to revitalize an area that got hit pretty, pretty badly in the last uh, decade. Yeah. So 
Anyway, Absolutely. that is really all I have. Todd, is there anything else you want to say? Like, why should people consider living in Puerto Rico? Uh, what do you like? You know, is there anything? Wait, actually, you know what? We didn't cover one thing. Is there anything you don't like about living in Puerto Rico? Yeah, so this, I, I don't like to say the words don't like, because truly, I there's nothing I don't like, but there is things I always like to say, be aware of. Mm. Um perfect example i lost power last night rolling power is sometimes an issue depending on where you live you know old san juan we have older grid here so sometimes you lose power uh, here sometimes i lose water because the cruise ships suck up all the water <laughs> so really uh, I, i've never oh, yeah. lost water at my place in isla verde now, you realistically probably won't but here man when five cruise ships come by your water's gone gone um but like if you can Play around some of that stuff and get used to that. Um, I, I just, I think the pros massively outweigh the cons for me, which is why I, you know, you take it in stride. But it is a change. Be aware, you know, summers get really hot and really humid. You know, if that's not your thing, well, this might not be your place. And, and I'll be you know? honest, I usually avoid hanging out in Puerto Rico in August and September, partly because very it's hot, hurricane season, but it's so humid at that time. Like, it's yeah, really absolutely. warm. It's really humid. Um, but, uh, you know, 10 months out of the year, it's amazing in my mind. And that part of the year, it's not it's not terrible. Like, it's just you know, be ready to sweat a little bit. If you're going to go for a walk, yeah. you're going to get sweaty. <laughs> like it's just going to happen. Make sure you get up in the, uh, the rainforest. It's like 20 degrees cooler yeah, and, and you know, that's beautiful water. See, exactly. There's always true. a solution. Exactly. All right. Well, Todd, thanks so much for sharing your insights about Puerto Rico with Puerto Rico life. Uh, maybe we can do it again sometime. Uh, I look forward to uh, talking to you again. And uh, like I said, at the, a bit ago, if you're interested in learning more about the opportunity to invest alongside of us, just feel free to reach out or just watch the video, which uh, we'll put on the end screen here too. So it'll make it easy for you. So thanks so much. And uh, be you. sure to like and uh, subscribe to the channel.